I feel like a lot of people in this field do burn out. This will keep me from burning out. For me, the biggest buzz of all of it is like solving the puzzle, solving the problem, getting it done, and moving on to the next couple or case. If I can do that with all these people, that's huge. Hey everybody, we're here on the Founder Hour and we're so happy to be uh, interviewing Laura Wasser today. Laura is a celebrity divorce attorney and also the new founder of a company called It's Over Easy, which we'll be talking more about. Uh, Laura, it's nice to be here with you. It's nice to have you here with me. Awesome. So why don't we kick this off? So instead of talking about your whole childhood journey and becoming an attorney, why don't you give us a kind of brief about you know why you chose the career that you did? Okay, well, I almost didn't have a choice. A lot of people know this. My initials are Law, Laura Allison Wasser. I did not know that, I actually. was conceived the night that my dad and mom found out that my dad passed the bar. I was a celebratory. I mean, so, so, I mean <laughs> right. So, textbook, and I textbook. fought it forever. I fought wanting to be a lawyer, but it was in me. Like, when I had to negotiate for my allowance or I wanted a curfew or my first car, I would come in with my little legal pad and everything would be written out. And my parents were like, yeah, you're not going to be a lawyer. We'll see. Anyway, then I um, went to law school, and I didn't think I was going to be a family law attorney because that's what my dad did, and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I actually got married um, in between my second and third year of law school, and it didn't work out. We were probably too young. We were probably rushed into it, and I still am friends with him. He's a lovely guy, but after about a year and a half after I took the bar, I was like, I think I got to get out. And so I needed money while I was waiting for my results. So I came to my dad and said, can I come clerk for you for the summer while I'm waiting? And he said, yeah, and your first case can be to do your own divorce because I'm not dealing with this. I paid for one wedding. I'm never paying for another wedding. <laughs> You're on your own. So I did. And I kind of just stayed at the firm practicing family law, which I find to be actually, now that I've been doing it for a long time, one of the most interesting kinds of law to practice. And when I go speak at law schools... I tell the students that because it really allows you to learn so much about so many different lifestyles and kinds of families and kinds of careers. And unlike people who are entertainment attorneys who represent the same clients for years and years and years, albeit making a lot more money because they get 5% of everything those guys earn, this, an hourly, lowly wage earning job, um, actually gives you a lot of over, a lot of turnover in terms of clients. And that's, I think, cool too. It's also problem solving, helping people get from A to B, and that's been very rewarding for me in terms of this career. So I stuck to it, and that's why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. How much of your, I guess, personal experience would you say kind of uh, attributed to the fact that you became a divorce attorney? Yeah, I think probably a lot, but not so much the experience I talked about, because our divorce was easy. We had nothing. We yeah. had a dog and we had some <laughs> debt, so like, that was very simple. A couple no, you take the debt. <laughs> you take the debt, I'll take the dog. Yeah. But we, but my my parents got divorced when I was about sixteen, and because my dad's a family law attorney, and because my parents are two of the most lovely, reasonable, civil people, um, I think that was part of it. Because I really know that this can be done in a really okay way for kids. That's how my parents did it, and that's how my father's always practiced law. And so when I talk to people that say this is going to be this the worst disaster, it's going to be horrible to. So you know what? I gotta tell you, this is doable. I, I've watched people do it personally. I've done it. I have two little boys with two different dads, and we all work it out. I know it's possible. Let me help you get there instead of making it a terrible, awful experience. So, Laura, the question I have is, you know, coming from a law background myself, how much of what you learned in law school did you apply either going right going right out after law school or to this day? Well, not actual laws that I learned in law school. As you know, there's not a very big focus on family law, and it's right. a pretty small body of mm -hmm. law. But I feel like law school teaches you a certain way to think. It really teaches you how to see both sides of every situation. It also teaches you, like I racking, like how to get things organized mm -hmm. and then present the issues, whether it be in a transactional form or a litigation form, present them in a way that you are able to hopefully get your point across. I was also right. a rhetoric major in college, so Jeez. I really yeah did feed into the you know the whole convincing and making an argument. Arguments are your thinking. thing. I'm yeah, not going to totally. argue with you. <laughs> 
I'm not gonna argue with you. So is that something that happens with your clients where you're you're in a situation where you know either they're arguing with each other or they're trying to argue with you? And how do you resolve something like that? The best way of resolving it is to be reasonable and also be very, very calm in your approach. So I will often have clients that come in and say, well, I'm having the kids. I'm a better parent. The kids are better with me. He's a jerk. I don't want... And I said, wait a minute. Now let's really think about this. Might not have been a good husband. Still could be a good father. Still maybe needs to learn and get some help in being a good father. But do you really want to take the, the right of your kids to have two parents away from them? And then they think about it and they think about it. And I said, look, you don't have to like him. But that's their dad. And so that's one way of doing it. And I also do quite a bit of mediation in my practice, which we have found to be more cost effective. It leads to better relationships. I tell people all the time, this isn't a fender bender or a landlord tenant dispute or a slip and fall on a market where you're never going to see that person again. Mm -hmm. You got to deal with this person, especially if you have kids, for the rest of your life, not even until they're 18, for the rest of your life. And so if Mm -hmm. you have to deal with them, we better right now figure out a way of doing that because you're burning bridges here that will make it difficult for you to co-parent and have your investments together and all that kind of stuff. So you're at graduating college and you're you know starting to work in, in this field. How do how do you go from being Laura Wasser the divorce attorney to Laura Wasser the celebrity divorce attorney? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Think about where we live first of all. Yeah, I mean, LA. everybody in some way, shape, or form. You know, you can be the celebrity dentist or the celebrity realtor or whatever. There are there happen to be a lot of people in the entertainment industry, and when they get divorced, many of them do come here. I think maybe 10, 15 years ago, one of the reasons that I started getting a lot of these clients is I was probably 10 to 20 years younger than many of my colleagues. Um, And at the time I was really cute (laughs) and I would dress cute and I would call, you know, clients dude or whatever. And so I think a lot of the entertainment attorneys and business managers and agents would send their clients to me because they knew their clients could relate to me. I had a lot of musicians, I had a lot of actors. And so they would come in and rather than sitting with some old guy in a suit, they're sitting with me wearing a pair of Doc Martens and calling them dude and not being like, why do you have a tattoo on your face, dude? Yeah. You know that, yeah. So I've had situations where I've had to take guys over to the Century City Mall and buy them a suit because we have court the next day and they don't own a suit. I've taught football players how to diaper their kids. <laughs> I mean, so I think it was really just kind of the personality fit yeah. with a lot of these, you know, quote, celebrities. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up because a lot of the times Patrick and I hear a lot of the millennial generation saying, you know, we're too young, you know, we're not going to be taken seriously. But clearly that wasn't the case for you. So what's your advice to these folks that are rather concerned with, oh, you know, my age is a factor and, you know, us not getting business, whether, you know, you're doing marketing or law or business or whatever it is. How can they stand out? Well, I think that's less of an issue now than it was back then. I did. I used to always put my hair up in a bun and I would wear stockings. I'm a lot more chill about the way I dress now because I've already earned the credibility. I think you have to, if you're a younger person and you're trying to get into a field, you really have to know your audience. I think that's important. I did represent tons of older people when I was younger and they would say, well, how do you know? And I said, well, I know because of this. You take whatever your personal experience is at the time. I had already been married once, so remember that. And I would say, look, I don't purport to know what you're going through. I never had kids, but I did own a house, so I know how hard it is to divide up the assets in the house. Or my parents got divorced. I know how that felt. Bring your own personality to it. Try not to be too stand out. Again, I know that younger people dress differently, talk differently. If you're talking to somebody that's older than you, come to their level so that you can relate. I think it's really important to be relatable. Mm -hmm. And back to your other question, just in terms of how, you know, when I first started getting to be the top of my field, it was because people didn't want to sit in front of an older guy in a suit. They wanted somebody young, whatever. I think now the new crop of people who are getting divorced they are do it themselves. They want to not even come meet with a cooler, younger, m- cuter me. They want to be at a coffee shop. They want to be at their apartment. They want to be somewhere where they can open their laptop, type things in, not have a bunch of direct contact with anybody. Valet, you're parking your car at this office and coming upstairs is so surreal for somebody that's mm-hmm. going through one of the most miserable, scary times mm-hmm. of their life. Mm-hmm. We did market research and we saw that if you buy a coffee maker now, that comes with instructions, you don't read the instructions, you go online. And so online, someone's there telling you, hi, this is this coffee maker and here's how here's how you work it. Mm-hmm. In our site, we have me going, hi, this is what date of separation is, or here's how you use our child support calculator, mm-hmm. or here's a calendar and you can fill it in and all that kind of stuff. 
we really realize that people now want to be the masters of their own destiny mm -hmm. and they, they want to do it alone right. or with their other person, but not with somebody charging them a ton of money and kind of telling them how it's done. Right. And I think that that's, you know, there's two reasons for that that I think about. I think number one, it's because people in our generation at least tend to be a little bit more casual. Uh, and number two, it's this instant gratification thing, whether it's, you know, you know, social media and, you know, wanting it like right there and yes. then uh, or, or divorce and wanting it right yeah. there and then. And I, and I know like the divorce process, you know, it, it takes a minimum of six months at least to a year plus. So it's like it's not really instant at that right. point anyways. But I guess that's a good segue into, you know, like the book that I see in front of me here um, that you've authored. And why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So I had been practicing, I guess, probably about 15, 16 years. And it, it struck me at that time, most of the people that I knew, my peers, could not have afforded a firm like this. But I ended up giving a lot of advice to friends and family. And they said, why don't you put some of this in writing? This is very basic stuff. It's not specific to any kind of state or jurisdiction. Write it down. And, and what, do you, what do you think? So I went to New York and I met with a couple publishing houses and they like got into like a bidding war and it was mm -hmm. actually really cool. And I never thought that I wanted to write a book, but I had a really great time working on this one. It's called It Doesn't Have to Be That Way, How to Divorce Without Destroying Your Family or Bankrupting Yourself. And it's kind of geared to our generation. It's got kind of examples of, well, maybe my generation, you guys are younger, but like it's got examples of you know, families we grew up watching TV, the Huxtables or, you know, the family that, um, the Growing Pains family. Mm -hmm. What if they got divorced? What would their custody calendars look like? It has a lot of examples. It has a lot of quotes from movies that we kind nice. of grew up watching. And so I wrote it and it's had very good, it was in 2013 that it came out and it's had good reaction. And that's kind of what led me into doing It's Over Easy. Yeah, so like, tell us more about it. It's so easy, and that's definitely a great segue. So, into I that. mean, the, what I thought the next step was tech. The next step was bringing this to a lot of people and figuring out a way that everybody can kind of have this experience that I hope to do here. I mean, obviously, there's always going to be more complicated divorces, and there's always going to be issues that are not easy to figure out. If somebody lives in California and they want to move to New York. That's a custody Community issue. properties, No, property. but I mean like with the kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was but, like, you're bringing back bad memories <laughs> right here. Sorry. <laughs> but no, because that you can't like mediate right, that. I mean, right, you could. Right, you could right. figure out vacations and stuff. Right. But if there's two people and they really are on the same page about wanting to keep the cost down, keep their money for themselves, and figure out a way to do this, this is what they'll do. And they don't have to pay super high attorney's mm -hmm. fees. They go on. They do have that instant gratification of actually filling out the forms. Mm -hmm. We totally populate everything. So as any of the tech sites that you guys have been in, I, I shop online all the time. Once I go in, they have all my information already. That's how we are. You, we will never ask you the same question twice. Mm -hmm. You fill all that out. And it makes it really, really user-friendly to be able to do it. And I thought... It's not so much about like, hey, let's figure out a new way to charge people money to get divorced because this obviously is less, way less money that I make being a family law attorney at this firm. What it is is changing the face of divorce and showing people that there is a different way of doing it and that likely that's a better way. So how, explain us how it works. Um, you know, someone goes in there, they put in all the information that you need to be able to, and then is it like, is there a human aspect to it? or is Yes, it there is a human time? aspect to it. First of all, just to like kind of give it a little plug, you can start for free. Okay. So one great part of it is we've got tons of content, blogs, articles, information that you can get without ever giving us any of your information or giving us any money. You can come on and you can read it because I do think it's important that people educate themselves. Sure. And right now there's not any great way of doing that. I meet with probably two or three prospective clients a week that I don't charge a consultation fee and that I just kind of sit with and give them what I call Family Law 101. Mm -hmm. This site has that, plus more, because it has people's personal accounts and what they've done and all kinds of referrals. So that's how you get started. And then we have like three different variables of what you can actually sign up for in terms of filling out the information and inviting your spouse or partner to join you. One really important thing is that this is a mediation service. So you guys are representing yourselves in pro per, but you're filling out the information, and to the extent that you need help, because you will, yeah. otherwise everybody would just pick up the forms down at the courthouse and do it, but you need to know what the law is. So we have all kinds of pop-ups. We have, again, my face popping up and telling you things, like a YouTube video or whatever, and we have all kinds of easy ways to figure out. It's almost like a video game. It's yeah. actually kind of fun if you're into kind of realizing the mm -hmm, process mm -hmm. and getting through it. 
But then once they have to go to like, you know, a hearing or whatnot, what happens in that process? They, or there's no hearing. They never have to go to a hearing. We actually submit the forms <clears throat> with them with the court. And okay. once they've come up with whatever the deal is and, and filled out the paperwork and submitted it back to us, we, we submit it to the court. They never visit the courthouse at all if right. it works the way it's supposed to. You know, so the intersection of law and technology is something that I think a lot of you know, I hate to call them that, but the older generation of attorneys shies away from because they think and they believe that it's going to take away jobs in the legal industry. But I have a, I have a different belief that things like artificial intelligence and, you know, augmented reality and virtual reality are going to, you know, create more jobs in the legal industry and it's just going to become more interesting. I just want to kind of hear your take on that and how you think about the t- intersection of law and technology. I think it's a really interesting intersection. I think there is a ton of opportunity there. I do think some of the older generation shies away from it, not so much because they think it's going to take away jobs, because they think it's going to take away their jobs, and right. it may. Right. I still have lawyers that don't read emails. They only read faxes. They only read them until a certain time of day. I get it. I'll work with that. But those guys are dinosaurs. They right. ha- you got to kind of get with the program. We have tons of lawyers that work with us to help us process the paperwork, to help us push people in the right direction, to contribute content. This is a way of working it out. I have had colleagues say to me, hey, you're taking money out of our pockets. And I said, really, most of you, I'm not taking money out of your pockets. Come help us. Be part of this, whatever. This is, again, conflict resolution. Yes, if you're going to stir the pot and churn up conflict, I'm taking money out of your pockets, and I don't feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. You, like you said, there's like a big educational part that um, you're almost like spending your human hours like telling people and explaining to them when it can be so easily you know accessed through a website. Um, is it gonna be like how do you plan on promoting this thing? Is it like gonna you're gonna be like heavy like on social media? Do you feel like is there any other avenues that you you know you could tap into? Well, we're doing a ton of social media. We're doing a ton of uh, initial PR around the launch. And um, as you've seen, Mm -hmm. as this is part of, um, I think that really one of the good things about me being me is, as most people know, I won't talk about any of our firm's clients or anything like that yet. However, whenever somebody famous gets divorced and we're representing them, the name comes up. And I mean, it's I can, public knowledge at that point. It's public yeah. knowledge when you file a petition or a response. So people will know, and my name's on the petition, so they'll know mm-hmm. I'm representing them. That hopefully, I mean, again, the credibility that comes along with doing this for as long as I've done it and representing as many high-profile people will hopefully be something that people, you know, sitting in the middle of the country will go, oh, I remember that lady. She represented X famous person. I wonder what her site's all about. Let me go on and see. If, if I've done nothing else in my 20 plus years of practicing law, I hope that I've been able to gain the trust of people because I have done this a long time and I've done it for people that they admire. You know, Laura, I'm wondering, and I, I guess it's kind of blunt, but you know, the, the topic of divorce isn't very sexy. I mean, no. it's it's like it's kind of a taboo. Like you know, especially like in the minority communities, it's always talking about like you know, the, you know, my parents are like, oh, you got to pick the right partner. You right. know, you can't get you know, you shouldn't be getting a divorce. But how do you make divorce so sexy? <laughs> I don't think I do make it sexy. Like with this technology <laughs> <I> app <laughs> and you know, just the clientele that you represent. I mean, it's and we've been talking about it in such a positive light. You know, how is that the case? Well, again, this is something people have said to me, and they did with the book, too. That was five years ago. You know, even some of the television shows that we wanted to promote the book on would say, oh, we don't, divorce, it's, we don't want to talk about divorce. Here's the thing, and even just five years later, I've seen a real shift in this. People are getting divorced. I'm not a divorce monger. I'm not encouraging people to get divorced. They're already getting divorced when they go to the site, or they're already having issues in their marriage when they go to the site and they're educated. We're not going, rah, rah, get divorced. It's going to be so great. Mm-hmm. We're saying, if you're getting divorced... It sucks. Let us try to help you make it through this process more easily. You're already getting divorced. It's like an oncologist. They're not like promoting cancer, right, yeah. but they're saying, you got cancer. Let us help you hopefully get through the cancer. So that's kind of how we feel about it. And I will say this, as a child of divorce and as a parent of not divorce, because I wasn't married to either of my kids' dads, but I was with them when we had the kids, I do believe that it's better for children to see happy parents than miserable parents. And if your marriage has come to a point where you can't fix it, I think it's better for you and your kids to part ways in an amicable fashion so that you can still co-parent and be friends. I still vacation with a couple of dads. I mean, we go to dinners, everybody was at Thanksgiving together. Mm -hmm. That's because we ended it before anybody did anything truly horrible. 
and because we all made a commitment to love our kids more than we hated each other. Mm -hmm. And that was really important. So I don't know how sexy it is, <laughs> but it can be a little bit less painful because right. you're spending right. less money and you're doing it in a way that you're both informed. I mean, so many people don't know the law. It's crazy to me that you would enter into a contract in, in, in your state and you wouldn't know what the terms of the contract were. If you yeah. think about when you get married, you, you get the band and you get, or the DJ and you get the venue and the cake and the dress and you sign contracts for all of these people, even the priest or rabbi. Mm -hmm. But the most important contract you're entering into, smart heads of studios, you know, professors, you know, advertising executives come to me and they go, wait, I have to split everything with him? And I'm like, yeah, you do. That's California community property. Mm -hmm. And I have to pay him spousal support after we split up? He's been sitting on the couch for five years. That's why we're getting divorced. I'm like, yeah, you're still gonna be paying for him. That's the law. If you don't know that going into it, and you come to me, I'm gonna explain that to you. You don't have to bother paying 850 an hour. Go online and read about it, preferably before you get married. But if not, read about it, educate yourself, and see how it works. And is that something that would be included on this site about things to know perhaps before entering into a civil union? Totally. We want to be like your full divorce family law resource. So while we do not do prenups because you really do need an attorney right. to represent you if you have a prenuptial agreement, we have tons of information on our site about why prenups aren't pre-negotiating your divorce or divorce planning. It's why it makes sense. And even if you don't get into a prenup, like if you're two young people who really don't have anything and you don't care about opting into a legal system that has you sharing 50-50 whatever you earn or create during the time you're married, if you're cool with that, isn't it still good to know that that's the law and maybe have conversations even that wouldn't be in a prenup? Talking about like, what's going to happen when my parents get older? I really don't want to put them in a home. Are you cool with them living with us? Or are our kids going to go to private or public or parochial school. People don't talk about this stuff because they're like, how do I look? Am I skinny enough for my dress fitting? Are these good flowers? Do we have the best DJ? Where are we going on our honeymoon? Some of those unsexy conversations are really important and could promote a much longer marriage if you have them out at the beginning and everybody knows what the expectations are. Totally. So how do you see it's over easy sort of transforming as, as, a, as a, you know, technology platform? Because Obviously, you know, you'll have your user base and, you know, you'll get to them. How about the other side of the, I guess, market with the lawyers and advisors and, um, you know, people that can give them advice, essentially? Like, how does that kind of I would work? love it to be a group effort. All the people that are in kind of my bar that I've spoken to are totally excited about it. And I've made several trips to New York over the past year and a half. And I do have colleagues there and we've got a great system there. And then as we branch out... Uh, my hope is that there's enough like-minded family law attorneys, and thus far there have been, that are really like, this is so cool, we're so passionate about this, it would be so great for those of us that are problem solvers and really want to take people out of the conflict and into a better place, being part of it. We have huge referral walls on here, so it's not just during the divorce, it's after. Family, parent, uh, family therapy, co-parenting planning. We have even like the whole setup for people like post-divorce mm -hmm. makeover, your stylist, your spray tan person, your hairdo, your dental cool. teeth whitening, whatever, and people that help you find the new apartment, sell the house, get a full set of plates and uh, cutlery and mm -hmm. glasses and um, bathroom supplies for your kids. If you're moving out and you're, let's say, the dad and you're not lit staying in the house, you got to buy the comforter cover that has, you know, the, the you know, uh, what's it called? Let it, let it. Frozen. Frozen, you yeah. You gotta get the frozen oh, comfort oh, yeah, 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 yeah. for your yeah, yeah. kids. Like Elsa. Yeah, right, so, okay, exactly. I was like, so there's okay. somebody that has to yeah. help you, you know, to yeah. do all that stuff. So yeah. we have a full yeah. referral wall, not just with legal professionals, financial professionals, mm -hmm. insurance mm -hmm. professionals, and all those other fun things that people need. Full service. Full service, and right. hopefully as we grow, communities will be able to come to us and we'll have the best people in every kind right. of field that we can refer you to to kind of help, again, get you to the next stage. Something that always fascinates me for companies Companies is the name. How, how did you guys come up with It's Over Easy? Oh, we played around with a ton of stuff and then I was just like, it's over. Easy. And then we kind of were thinking about an egg and whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It finally came to us. It wasn't something that I've okay. had in there for a long time. And some people, some of my partners are like, we hate it. And then people go, would well, love the name. And I'm like, good, me too. <laughs> yeah. um, so what has been like the biggest, I guess, challenge for you? Like, you've had like a great career so far um, and you like kind of know it at this point. You know it in and out and you know what it takes to get this platform, you know, make it successful. Um, what has been like a challenge for you for this specifically? It's over easy. Well, I think it's twofold. One, I'm not the most te 
tech savvy person. So sometimes they'll start explaining to me like the coding and I'm like, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about, nor do I need to. Mm -hmm. I'm so lucky that I've been able to work with great, you know, program advisors, developers, all those people that have really made this platform. And it's funny when we first started out and that dovetails into the second thing, which is the money, Mm -hmm. because we haven't gone out as a lot of startups do to a bunch of investors. We really kind of Mm self-funded, which you can do as an older founder. I mean, I had some money saved up and I, Pretty sure my kids will both be going to college. So once I like save, put that away. I mean, away. we don't know. I went to USC, and we both went to USC, and it's like what almost sixty thousand now. Well, so yeah. yeah, I just I like, figured it was going to be much higher than <laughs> yeah. whatever it is. Now. Yeah, exactly. Based but on once, that trend. Once that money was kind of put aside, my partners and I kind of came up. We've done it on a shoestring, but when we were first planning the you know the beta for it. They were saying it's kind of going to be very, very basic. It won't do necessarily all the great things that you have an idea for, like these calculators that have everything from Ramadan to Hanukkah to President's Day, all of that stuff in it, plus the kids' birthdays you can put in. Don't get ahead of yourself. Or in California, we have a very complicated guideline support calculation. Other states, it's easier. It's just a percentage. So we came up with these things by ourselves, and they were like, just try to bear with us. It's going to be a little bit just yeah. like of a jalopy. Yeah. And they basically built a Ferrari and it's wow. so good and it's only getting better, but it really, really is much more than what we ever thought it would be. With the stuff that you just talked about, like, you know, is there any sort of artificial intelligence integrated into that? Yeah. Oh my God. There has to be like, we tell you tell us all this information. For example, the way that I kind of have always explained to clients that the divorce works is it's kind of like a three step process. So you've got you know, the, the filing of the initial forms, the petition and the response, which just gives you the basic statistical information. Then you have what you have and what you owe, your assets and debts, okay? And then you have what you make and what you spend, which is your income and your expenses. And so you, those are the four corners of any divorce. So once you pr- put all that information into it, our artificial intelligence helps you figure out and you create like a community property balance sheet. You Very divide cool. stuff, you move it, it adds up the numbers so you can figure all of that out. There's cool little pictures, you know, but piggy bank mm-hmm. and whatever else, things that you get to move around. At each stage, you kind of invite your spouse or partner to agree or not agree, and you have to click it to agree. And then as you get to the next stage, which is the deal, where you come up with, here's what we figured out, given the four corners of what we have, oh, make and spend, mm-hmm. here's what the deal is going to be. And then you've got custody, which is kind of a separate thing. And if they don't have kids, then you don't deal with that. Figure out the custody calendar. And as part of the make spend is where you come up with the support, whether it's child and or spousal. Then you've got the deal, then that paperwork is submitted. So there's a ton of artificial intelligence, and like I said before, there's a ton of help because that's where people will hit the wall. Well, what would happen if I went to court on this? Would I be able to get a judge to convince a judge that I should have more money because he cheated on me? That's where you have somebody either in a pop, you know, Skype live chat or whatever, or you can go in for a meeting and we go, no, that. It doesn't matter if he cheated on you. California is a no-fault state. You're still going to share custody. It's good to have somebody out there that will be able to give you that information so you're not operating under the false impression that, like, you're giving something up. You wouldn't have gotten that anyway. Something something we always love to, to talk about is kind of the why behind any project or business. Um, I guess in, in this case, for It's Over Easy, like, like kind of, again, you know, you've had a great career. You're obviously young, but at this point, you can keep – doing what you're doing, right? You don't even have to start a new project or go into anything else. Why start a brand new kind of tech company in this case? It was time. It, I mean, look, it's been 20 plus years I've been doing this and I'm not quitting my day job. I probably need to keep doing my day job to support it. It's easy for a little while. <laughs> yeah. But um, it, it was time. It was time to kind of, first of all, I do feel it's like giving something back. And I feel like you can continue to do your craft at this level of you know funding and all that with the clients that we have and the very expensive divorces we have. But then it's something that you have to kind of take it to the next level. And I would not by any stretch of the imagine say this is charity work, but it is God's work a little bit to kind of give to people what I know and what you don't, right. you shouldn't have to pay all that money per hour mm-hmm. for. So. That was part of it. And then also, I really do believe that continuing to change and evolve just for myself, it does keep you young. It's good for you. I feel like a lot of people in this field do burn out. Mm-hmm. This will keep me from burning out because I do think it really, for me, the biggest buzz of all of it is like solving the puzzle, solving the problem, getting it done, and moving on to the next couple or case. If I can do that with all these people, that's huge. Yeah. Laura, what I find most interesting is how you're so calm and yet you're energetic. How do you deal with these celebrity clients is what I'm fascinated with. I mean, they have big personalities. I mean, people that are not celebrities have big personalities. But these folks come in, I'm sure, and we're not going to give any names, but I'm sure they, you know, 
big egos, like, you know, deep pockets. How, how do you sit down with them and kind of act reasonable around them or you know, at least talk them into reasonable, you know, situations? I think, keep in mind, most of these people, when they do come in or interact with me, sometimes I go to them, um, they're very vulnerable. So they're not coming in like swinging their, you know, around. Mm -hmm. they, they really want, they want help. And so they are generally pretty deferential to me and say, I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. I'd say the biggest issue that I get is people going, you're going to have to talk to my assistant. I don't do that. And I'm like, well, I don't do that. You want me to represent you? We need to talk at least a little bit. I'm not going to bother you. We don't need to become besties. We never even have to meet in person, but I need the information from you. And I will deal with your business manager, assistant, whoever else for all this stuff. But if it's something like custody or what's going to work, I need to kind of get inside your head a little bit and find out what's going to make you happy. Nobody knows you or your spouse better than the two of you. To the extent that I'm going to come in and try to help you out, I'm happy to, but I need, like, like Jerry Maguire said, mm -hmm. help me help you. Mm -hmm. um, but most of them are really great. And again, that's been from day one. Have they become more deferential as I've gotten older and my you know Wikipedia page has more celebrity names on it? Maybe. But for the most part, they're they are going, they, these are people who generally have lived rock star lives, okay? Mm -hmm. They've flown private, they've been to premieres, they've been to the Cannes Film Festival, they're dressed by the designers, they go and get the best meals, so they're super sophisticated. But the one area that they don't know anything about is this area, because why would they? So they do come in and they go, just just tell me, what, what do I need to do? How is this going to be? Is it going to be weird? And that is another thing that I think sometimes people that have been practicing in their field for a long time, doctors... And lawyers forget it's we're, we do this all day long this is their first time so you need to say to somebody when we file the paperwork on Friday it becomes public mm -hmm. so you need to know maybe you want to go out of town maybe you want to make sure your spouse knows too if I can I'll file both sets of paperwork on the same day if they're getting along because that says sends a message to the media these people must be getting along because their lawyers coordinated telling them what to expect is really helpful and they come to really trust you because they're like She's in this for us. She wants what is best for us, and she wants to make sure that we're going to come out of this okay. And again, I haven't had many huge ego throwdowns. I've, I've seen it with other people, but for me, I'm in and out. My job is to make sure that this is done, and they can go back to making lots of money and lots of public appearances and stuff so that all of their reps take their percentages, and they go on with their lives. What's considered a win for you know Laura Wasser, and why do people keep coming back? A win for Laura Wasser is as little media attention as possible and, frankly, as little court time as possible. Anything that we can pull out of the system and resolve on our own, meaning the clients, mm -hmm. without having a judge make the call, that's a win. And why do they keep coming back? Because we have a lot of those. So since that is such a big part of it is that mediation aspect and, you know, uh, kind of sitting both parties down, how do you see, specifically for It's Over Easy, how do you see that being a part of it? Like, you know, when they go through this process, obviously there's a lot they can do themselves. Um, where, where does that kind of, you know, human come in? Right. When they hit a wall and they yeah, say, okay. we can't agree on this. I think a lot of times... What's that expression? If you you know give them teach them how to if you give them a fish they'll eat the fish if you teach them how to fish whatever if you give people information they can usually sort it out then they will hit a wall about something even with the information but that's not fair that's not right I can't, I don't understand this you did half of this screenplay when we were married and then half of it after what part of it's mine. So yes, you will need someone, and that's why it's over easy. The figure most divorces cost in, in the United States cost somewhere between 15 to 20 grand. Not at this office, but just your average mm -hmm. Joe divorce. For 1250, we include a phone consultation with a family law attorney or a Skype call or whatever. So that's the human element of we've done almost all this, but this is the one sticking point. We just kind of need somebody to give us their opinion who's been doing it a long time. Mm -hmm. What do you think would happen? And that will kind of get them to the next step, hopefully. Awesome. I think that this has been a great conversation. Yeah. Uh, we thank you for your time. Sure. And uh, we wish you the best success with your current legal practice and with Over Easy. It's Over Easy. Thank you so much, you guys, too. This is a great, a great podcast. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.